everyone. Hello, welcome to this third AXA Live Innovation Talk. We're very happy to have you with us. Um, you know, this is really the meeting that we organize together, business leaders, experts, uh, innovators to talk about everything we are passionate about, you know, what innovation can bring to global problems, to global issues, how we can, uh, you know, leverage the, the experience and the convictions of, of our ecosystem here at AXA. And so we are really so happy to have you once again with us. For those who have already followed us, you will know that you can ask uh, your questions through uh, social media, be it on YouTube, LinkedIn, or Twitter, uh, any of those will work. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to start with today's topic, which is one that is very close to my heart, of course, which is about the role of women in innovation, women in entrepreneurship. How can we leverage that great diversity that we have? How can we give them the means to be more vocal, more present, more active? And to discuss this topic, I am really happy, really lucky to, to be uh, uh, accompanied by three great guests today, which I'm going to introduce shortly. Uh, because I could go on for hours for each of them. They have done so much uh, already in their careers and in their lives. Uh, starting with you, Suzanne Sobot, very happy to have you uh, with us today. Susan, you are the former president of uh, American Express Global Commercial Services. Today, you have a, an extremely diverse uh, activity around uh, uh, you know, innovation, tech, uh, venture capital, private equity with a lot of roles on boards, on advisory boards, you're advising a lot of people. I also love the fact that you yourself are uh, an investor in female founders. I think that says a lot about your personal conviction, your teaching about business leadership, sharing some of your experience with, with the younger generations, and you're a mother of two teens, which I'm sure takes a lot of your time. <laughs> Antoine, welcome. We wanted this to be a diverse panel. So, <laughs> of course, we wanted to have somebody uh, also for whom I have a lot of admiration and, and respect. Antoine is the head of company engagement at BNP Paribas since 2017. And he actually really created this role, which now a lot of other companies are taking on, which is this idea of heading the engagement of the company, transforming the way it operates and it impacts all the different stakeholders bringing uh, new ways of operating, of decision-making, of influencing the culture, the mindset. So really fascinating work here. Uh, prior to that, Antoine, you had been for 16 years the group head of communication at BNP Paribas. So you have a long journey with this uh, great company. But what I also love about Antoine is that he took a I don't know if I can say a sabbatical, but a, a break to create a wonderful piece on women, uh, but not in tech. He he wrote one of the most fascinating books about actresses in the golden age of Hollywood. So I really recommend you to read it. And uh, maybe we will have time to discuss what women entrepreneurs and actresses have in common. Uh, but thank you so much, Antoine. You're very busy. We're happy to have you here. Last but not least, Fabienne, Fabienne Colli. Fabienne is uh, one of us. She works at AXA. She's the chief commercial officer leading our global enterprise management here at AXA. Uh, she has been uh, doing a lot of work with her teams for the past two years to accelerate AXA's ability to partner and to really establish those wonderful partnerships with its top, uh, I would say, partners across the, the, the group. And before that, she also was uh, uh, with American Express, uh, working in different roles as general manager of International Global Client Group and heading the B2B uh, activities of Amex in, in Europe. So again, thanks a lot for being here. Great panel to tackle a great topic, but let's jump into it right away. Before asking each of you different questions, I have one for which I would love to have a short answer if possible. Why does it matter to talk about gender parity in innovation and tech? And Fabienne, I will ask you to go first. Sure. 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 Well, thank you first, Enrique, for, for the invitation. Well, pretty quickly, I mean, 51% of the world populations are women, so we're not a minority for sure, but also that means that there is 51% of potential customers as well. And if we're not diverse within supporting entrepreneurship, then we won't be able to respond to the, to the customer demand, especially for the new generation that are a lot more tech savvy than we are. Excellent summary. Suzanne, what, what, what is your view? You know, thank you again for including me as well. I think it's pretty simple. 
the potential of women entrepreneurs for spurring economic growth just has not been fully realized. If women took their fair share of leadership roles in entrepreneurship, we'd have more jobs, more revenues, and more economic prosperity. Great. Thanks, Suzanne. Antoine, shortly your first answer to this big topic. Well, uh, as, as a bank, we are working with clients, but through our action with clients, we have to, to deliver and to help deliver the, the society the people want to live in. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, half of the world population uh, are women, and uh, the society uh, that is expected uh, is uh, uh, a society where empowerment, power, economy, all this is gender equal, and uh, we are simply there to, to deliver uh, this expectation. It's a, it's a major, major part of our role. Thanks a lot to the three of you. Let's let's get into a bit more details. Susan, um, so why are women underrepresented? And of course, you know that very well through all your, your activities and, and relationships and, and all those boards you are on. Why are they still underrepresented in leadership position in startups and in, in the innovation field? And what are for you the, the solutions that we can find to address this issue? Sure. Well, gosh, this is a long topic and there's lots to say on it. So I'll try and hit a few highlights. Um, as Fabienne said, uh, as, and as did Antoine, women are at least half, if not the majority, of workers. Yet, when we look at leadership roles, they lag behind. I'll share a few statistics in the U.S. where women hold 52% of all management and professional jobs. Yet, only 19% of law partners, law firm partners are women. Only 16% of medical school deans are women. Um, only 12% of Fortune 500 CFOs are women. And of course, we know the statistic of CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. Only 7% uh, are women. So what's happening here? I think the reason that this is occurring is because we ask more of women than we do of men. So what do I mean by that? Well, women are more responsible for child rearing and elder care than their male counterparts with an average of 20 hours more a week that women are doing working at these tasks than men. That's a, that's a part-time job on top of whatever full-time job that they have. Women also ask more of themselves than men do of themselves. They feel that they have the need to have done a role before or have more expertise um, when they uh, look to take on new responsibilities. So they, they just work harder. Um, and honestly, we ask women to have more experience and deeper track records before we promote them or put them in high profile jobs. In a, in a tech report uh, that I was taking a look at recently, 78% of women in tech report that they have to work harder than their male coworkers. That's almost 80%, eight out of 10 women think that they have to work harder to prove their worth. And honestly, only about 25% of women in tech think that they will see themselves in management when over half of men see themselves in management when we ask the same question. Interesting. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So given all of these factors, women's dropout rates are much higher. They're, they also think they're paid less. Why do we think women are dropping out? Yeah, and, and, I'm, and I, I, I actually think this is not going to get better after the crisis we've just been through. So anyway, let's let's try to be optimistic. Fabienne, um, do you think progress will be made when instead of talking about women entrepreneurs, we simply say entrepreneurs and have the confidence that within that, uh, uh, you know, uh, world 50%, I mean, there is gender parity without having to specify. So do you think we're close? Do you think we will get there? Uh, where do we stand? Well, I hope there will be a day, and this is why I think we all on this panel is really to support that part until it actually happens. So hopefully there will be uh, in my lifetime, I hope. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, no. Um, it's important to be bold, yes. Um, but unfortunately, we can see through the statistics Susan was talking about, but also to support innovation, you have to create a field to enable innovation. And at ACSTA, for example, as you know, 
we've built AXA Next a few years ago, which really is an incubator of innovation. So it doesn't take just um, you know one part or another. It's really there to help gender diversity, capacity, culture of thought. So diversity of thoughts is really important. And as you know, in your team, we also have a team that is solely focused on women entrepreneurship because it's not just about supporting the entrepreneurs. It's also about supporting the women to get what they need. And so, you know, for example, um, I love the work that we do in terms of looking into data of how women's behavior is and so supporting startups that create those new products made for women, by women. I think it's a fabulous example and fascinating to see that more and more these startups uh, are growing. Thank you, Fabienne. So uh, let's stay cautious, but still optimistic. I, I see there's a question in the chat and uh, and Antoine, I think this is addressed to you by Flora uh, and, and maybe also a way for you to tell us the journey that BNP Paribas, who has such a strong commitment with women entrepreneurs, maybe explain us, uh, you know, where you come from, what you're trying to achieve with that at, at uh, with your company. Well, What we can see is that uh, it's more difficult uh, for a woman than for a man uh, to get uh, funding uh, to develop a, a business. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a bad thing for the society. It's a bad thing for the, the, the women. Uh, and uh, it's a bad thing for the bank, even in a risk per perspective. Because uh, uh, actually, uh, it's true that... Uh, Uh, sometimes uh, women uh, are not uh, as good in as marketing their project uh, because they have a kind of uh, of uh, impostor syndrome. So they are uh, sometimes uh, they have a kind of uh, I would say uh, um, uh, 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 self uh, 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 restrained attitude. But at the end, it's very important when you have a business project to have a syndrome of impostor it, <laughs> because it, it makes your uh, uh, project much better. Uh, and uh, and and probably uh, if all the if all the the, the, the people uh, who uh, present business project would have this kind of of uh, syndrome of imposter, uh, the business plans uh, would be uh, much more uh, accurate. Uh, and uh, I, I have a, I, I could uh, tell you uh, our journey. Uh, we have decided that uh, our uh, Uh, local uh, retail operations, for example, they have to uh, uh, fund a certain number of uh, enterprises uh, led by women and they don't have uh, uh, reached their objectives when they don't have done this. Uh, for example, in, on the French market, it's two billion euros uh, for uh, 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 small uh, Uh, and mid-sized businesses. So uh, since uh, our French retail operation uh, has not lent uh, two uh, uh, billion uh, euros uh, to small businesses headed by women, they haven't met their uh, objectives, uh, but it's also served by uh, organization. We have 200 Uh, uh, people in our uh, uh, network who are specialized in uh, in prompting uh, 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 financing for uh, for women. As a result, for example, just in France, which is uh, uh, less than one third of our operation, uh, we have uh, 80. Uh, 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 80,000 uh, women uh, entrepreneurs that are financed by BNP Paribas. But maybe the, the, the most incredible experience we have is in another country, for example, in Senegal. In Senegal, we are working uh, with a community of 15, 15,000 women uh, who have literally saved their villages by developing uh, resilient uh, agriculture. And uh, we discovered that they are very good uh, uh, um, uh, in their uh, ag agro technology. They have developed really very good agriculture. Uh, they uh, are extremely uh, trustworthy people and very good client uh, for the bank. But they were not on the radar of the bank because they are too far. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and. Uh, And one thing is that once they have saved their villages, uh, once it works, uh, the men uh, came back 
uh, and said, uh, but uh, why the hell uh, are you granted the, granting the land to the women? Uh, uh, we are the men. Uh, the, the land is ours. Uh, and uh, we have helped local women uh, to... to to, 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 to empower them uh, and to make sure that they keep the right on the land. They, they have got training uh, to monitor their culture with drones, uh, which they are extremely good uh, at, which allow to monitor the culture without pesticides. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible story. And at the end of the day, what, she's, what is fantastic is that our, the head of our bank uh, in Senegal, they say, yes, at the end of the day, uh, those women are far more uh, trustworthy uh, than the, the, the <laughs> companies uh, we are uh, we are used to, to work yeah. with. And it's investing, uh, it's, men, uh, it's investing in women is good for risk management, and it's also good for driving change. That's very clear. I, I, I love that story. I think we have one question that is coming to us by video. I invite you. Maybe let's discover it all together. Hi, I'm Flore Egnel, the director of Willa, an incubator specialized in women entrepreneurship. Many thanks for organizing this event because it is so important to talk about women and innovation because it is urgent to build an inclusive world because inclusion means more performance and more innovation, so many thanks. My question is, from your point of view, what are the biggest challenges for women in the innovation sector? Many thanks in advance. Thank you. And Fabienne, I would love to hear it from you, but as we're nearing maybe the, the uh, you know, we, we have to be careful with time. And I, I really like to get concrete now. What is the one or two, I would say, main challenges that you see in women or uh, for women in the innovation space? Well, I see two, I actually see two very quickly. One is in within women as well, and the other one is more external. Uh, the one within women is, it's true. And from hearing to my fabulous panelists here, uh, with me, it's the same, right? Women do feel that they don't believe enough in themselves and so sometimes just don't take the risk. But so in reality, when we look at the startups, when we look into companies, and as you said, when um, you know when leaders, women happen, companies do uh, perform better. And that's, you know, that's in the statistics. So that's the first one. But I think the second one is just completely um, external. You know, we know that today investors, angels, etc., do not really invest into women, um, women entrepreneurship. But very, less than 10% actually invest in women startups. Uh, I mean, two reasons. Maybe one is women are not as punchy or you know willing to to push and and take that risk. But I think a second one is a lot of investors are men. Mm, and so absolutely. therefore there needs to be a, a clear change with this and hopefully you know people like susan who are investing you know show and, and be role model to be able to to do that but but to me a big component of the answer is within us and it's about you know this networking and making it very open um that it is important to just change the change the trend Great. Thanks, Fabienne. And very shortly, I'd like to hear also from uh, maybe starting with you, Antoine. What is the one thing that can be done that can move the needle in the right direction? Uh, first of all, it's very important that investing decisions are taken by women. You know, uh, at BNP Paribas, our three largest banking networks, uh, which are in uh, France, in Italy uh, and uh, USA West, are headed by women. Uh, which is, uh, 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 I believe, a, a very important point. Uh, one thing uh, I really believe that IT tech is really important. Uh, it's very important in uh, in, uh, in entrepreneurship, in startups, uh, and it's a complete chain. So we need, uh, for example, BNP Paribas. Uh, our IT budget is six billion euros per year. So it's uh, it's uh, it's huge, uh, and it's very important that we hire uh, women in IT. It's very important that we work with academics, with, uh, with university, uh, to, to make sure that there is a really a, 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 an important uh, 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 part of women uh, coming uh, uh, to do uh, this, uh, this uh, training uh, mm. in, uh, in IT. Uh, and, uh, and 
ourselves uh, be uh, very uh, active in doing this. For example, mm -hmm. uh, we we have uh, at BNP Paribas our chief data officer uh, is uh, is a woman, uh, and uh, I believe uh, we have to do uh, this kind of, uh, of moves. Uh, and uh, it's a complete ecosystem. If the large companies uh, hire uh, women in senior positions uh, in IT, if they work with university and academics uh, to ensure there is a pipe, uh, if we all do that, uh, at the end uh, of the day, uh, it will also have an influence on startup uh, and uh, investment uh, ecosystem. I fully agree. Equipping women in tech is key. Susan, from you, what is the one thing that can really make a difference and get us closer to where we would like to be? I just am going to double click on self-confidence. It's really about teaching women to trust themselves, their instincts, and their own ability to succeed and surrounding them with the support that believes in them when they don't believe in themselves question actually which I like a lot on the chat from Grace and on that one I'm really going to ask you a short answer. What is the best piece of advice you can give to women entrepreneurs? And Antoine, I'm going to start with you. Uh, if uh, you are uh, faced to uh, bankers or investors uh, who doesn't seem to understand uh, that uh, your project uh, is good and who seem to have, a, uh, I would say, adverse approach uh, with women, just uh, skip them and go to other bankers or other investors. Because uh, now I believe that there is a sufficient number uh, of uh, investors and bankers who have understood that uh, 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 it's uh, it's uh, you, you have a, a lot and a lot of good projects run by women who are very good uh, entrepreneurs. And uh, if uh, you are you are faced to a person who is not uh, uh, able to, uh, to 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 understand, uh, so just go somewhere somewhere else because you will. Great advice. You will, you will don't, find. don't waste your time with detractors. Never. That's for sure. Uh, Susan, on your side, what is your advice? Ask for help. You know, you can't do it alone, either at home or at work. So uh, get help and deploy yourself against the things that only you can do and get others to do the rest. Oh, I love that one. Thank you so much, uh, even if I'm not an entrepreneur. Fabienne, what would be your advice? Yeah, similar for me, it's about the networking. You are not alone and more. there's more and more associations and foundations and forums where women can actually feel that they're part of a community. And I think that gives probably them a lot more strength knowing that they're not the only one uh, trying to make a difference. Excellent. Thanks for that. Susan, you are, as I said, you have some a great view on the, the ecosystem, especially in the US, on the tech and data and healthcare ecosystem. You know them through your different activities. And I mean, you told us many, many figures showing that we're still a long way from seeing women take all their space. So let's let's be not on the personal advice, but more on the structural. What needs to change in the system so that we can really get where we want? Absolutely. Well, there is there are very important steps we can take to encourage more women in leadership. First of all, we need to demand it. We need to demand gender diverse leadership teams of ourselves, first of all, but also of our suppliers, of our partners, of our professional services firms. We make decisions every day to do business with others. We can tell them we want them to have gender diverse teams. We also need to invest in the support structure for women. We have to allow them childcare solutions. And that's not only for women, it's for all working parents. And we have to understand that we can offer flexibility. Now more than ever, we know the possibilities of productivity with flexibility. We don't need a pandemic to continue to understand that as managers, we can offer our employees the ability to work in the way that works for them. We also have to ensure representation and recognition. We have to advance women 
as Antoine said earlier, we have to put women in leadership roles so women can see themselves and the possibilities. Uh, and we have to recognize them not only for the work they do, but for the context in which they do that work. We have to recognize them as parents, as caretakers, as athletes, as community volunteers, as friends. And as was said earlier, we have to invest. Investing in women is what will make a difference, not only our time as mentors or as coaches or as cheerleaders, but our money, we need to put our money where our mouth is. As Antoine told the story in Senegal, look at the difference that is being made in communities that are changing the lives of generations to come because of that investment in women. Women have higher emotional intelligence, I shouldn't want to say higher, they have high emotional intelligence. <laughs> they are dynamic, they are adaptable, and they are motivating lead leaders because they are motivated by the impact that they are making, not just by financial returns. In fact, men are more likely to, they are eight times more likely to be motivated by financial gain. Women are thinking, of course, about financial gain, but they're also thinking about the, the impact they're having on their teams and on their communities. Why wouldn't we invest in women? I agree. The, the case is there very clearly. Thanks for laying that out for us. Antoine, uh, what I love is that with BNP, you have also this very long-standing commitment in favor of the broader diversity and yes. especially a fight against discrimination. So equal access of all uh, to, to, you know, to, uh, to education, to financial means. And how do you see this topic of broader diversity within the innovation? We have seen in the U.S. a very strong stance on, uh, um, you know, allowing the black community also to be much more present in innovation. And with all the, the experience you guys have, uh, how do you see that link between diversity and innovation? How far are we? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a kind of uh, pyramid. You have diversity. Uh, you have uh, innovation uh, and you have the the, lo the, lo the economy and the local economy. Uh, as a bank, uh, we are an employer. We have 200,000 200, uh, employees uh, uh, around the world uh, and uh, we are uh, uh, serving the, the economy uh, uh, everywhere. And uh, we, we really believe that uh, we have to provide innovation we, and we have to uh, disseminate uh, innovation uh, and uh, in the territories uh, to help fight the territorial uh, imbalances uh, and having a diverse uh, uh, mindset as an employer and as a banker uh, is uh, is essential, and this makes you uh, work with the communities. This makes you work with associations. For example, uh, as uh, uh, at BNP Paribas, we are the first employer of one of France's most disadvantaged areas, uh, which is the Department of Saint Saint Denis. Uh, and in this area, uh, we are we yeah. have really developed a comprehensive politics. Uh, to be able to help all the small businesses that are developing innovation, uh, to help all the associations that are working uh, to, to guarantee equality of chance uh, at school and in universities. Of course, uh, it, this reflects also in our hirings. So it's, it's important to have a, a kind of comprehensive approach uh, of the fact where when you have an ecosystem, uh, you have to provide uh, uh, equal uh, access to funding, innovation, school, university. Uh, it's, uh, it has to, to you, you, at, at one moment, a company, when you have an important footprint, which is we are the largest European bank, so obviously uh, we have a, an important uh, footprint. Uh, and, uh, and when you have an important footprint, you need to have a comprehensive approach uh, of your responsibility and try to, to make it work with, uh, with all your levers. And, and at the end of the day, it's very good for business. But we don't want just do a good bank for business. We also uh, uh, make a bank we are able to explain to our children. 
Great. And I think at this stage, I think everybody understands what exactly the role of head of engagement of a company is. Thanks a lot, Juan. <laughs> Fabian, on your side, diversity, innovation, was it, what is it bringing? What have you seen through your experience uh, at AXA and also beyond? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it do, diversity matters. That's just the way it is. It, there's many fields where we need women, women to women are customers. In AXA, we actually have several programs. I mean, uh, obviously, internally, we are doing quite a lot for uh, leaders and improving this middle management to go into senior executive, because one of the issue is really how do you bring women at the top? You need to have candidates for that. And so how do you bring that middle level managers to higher ambitions to be able in the in the next future, I hope. Uh, and you're a great example because you're not our management committee. So it's very important that, that we do that and we make that decision. But I mean, for, for me in AXA, the AXA program for the women startups led by women doing products for women is also to me a fabulous example of where we can be a little bit bolder around supporting women in entrepreneurship. So if I take two examples, last year we did one with uh, the Femtech Accelerator uh, with 50 Introtech, where we looked into many, many startups and kept 10 of them. Throughout the year, we supported them, uh, you know, coaching, uh, bringing them within AXA, uh, mentoring, but also for some of them, investing in them with our AXA venture partner entity. So that's a big component. Uh, Willa, that we saw earlier, uh, the, the question this year, we are actually supporting in France the startups that are health related, women and kids health related startups led by women. And, you know, for being part of it, a lot of their question is not necessarily about um, you know what they what they want to sell, but it's about you know am I doing the right thing? How can I do this? You know, and so helping them and supporting them through a kind of a protective environment so that they can ask about their doubts and uh, you know ask for support. Uh, but it's very interesting because two weeks ago with BNP Paribas we did um, a mutual. Um, mutual event called Connect Her, that's the BNP Periva, uh, small businesses, women entrepreneurship. And so AXA came as well. And we, um, you know, we talked about cybersecurity for small businesses. Um, but to me, these are the types of, of actions that we need to show. The, the thing is, we need to multiply them. It's not going quick enough. And so how do we multiply them? It's, I believe through a lot of sponsorship from everyone. Great, thanks. We're reaching the end of the session now. One last question. You, of course, are very committed. We have seen that you throughout the talk, uh, you know, in many, many ways and also inspiring a lot of people on this topic. So who is inspiring you? Can you please tell me for the end of this session, what is the entrepreneur, women entrepreneur that has really marked you and that inspires you to do what, you know, to keep on the, the commitments you have taken? And Susan, if I might start with you, um, really eager to know who that one inspiring woman is for you? You know, um, I am inspired by the young women who are coming and making a change in the world. And so my uh, uh, my icon is Greta Thunberg. She is not uh, she is not an entrepreneur yet, yes, um, but I she's a say. Swedish climate activist. And, you know, at 16, she told the world that we need to make change for the benefit of the environment. And her passion is what I, I would like to see all of us have, that conviction to make change. Great. Thanks a lot, Suzanne. Fabienne, who is inspiring you? Well, I had the luck of having amazing women's leadership and, and the role models within companies. And I do think that's very important. So I don't have one particular name, but I have one uh, association which, which is called Women's Forum for Economy and Society. And AXA is a founding member. I really, um, it's every single time so inspiring to me, not only because we are building more and more of a, of a network of business and economic women, so it's really about business, but it also brings quite a lot of, of things around support and, um, you know, and, and trainings and, and looking into those role models, interviews. Uh, but also what I really appreciate with them is that they are bold. Um, they, knew, they do now manifestos as well for the G7, for the G20. So it's more than trying to create a, 
a, a circle or a good network for women. It's also about acting and, and really showing the engagement. And I think that's, that's so inspiring to me. Thanks a lot, Fabienne. Antoine, what about you? Uh, so what, what, uh, what is important for me is that I could notice that uh, a lot of women are, are bringing something new in sustainable investment, in making uh, investment better for the planet uh, and, for, uh, and for social. Uh, I can uh, mention uh, in France Marie Eklant, Fanny Picard or, or Eva Sadoun who are playing uh, an important role. Or, or, they are game changers. But if you want me to be 100% honest, person who didn't uh, strike me the, the most in my life, in my entire life, is, uh, is Maria Novak. Uh, Maria Novak uh, is a woman uh, who belonged to a, a family that had uh, disappeared uh, in, the, in, the, in the camp in, uh, in Auschwitz. Uh, she has uh, uh, worked uh, in uh, development in uh, uh, disadvantaged countries in uh, all her life. And one day she met uh, Mohamed Yunus. Uh, who, had, uh, who was developing microfinance in uh, Bangladesh uh, and who later became a Nobel Prize uh, of, uh, of Peace. Uh, and uh, and she, she, she has seen that the model of microfinance could be uh, imported to developed countries. And she has developed it, she has imported it to, uh, to France uh, very successfully. Uh, the, 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 the association she created uh, is now funding more than uh, uh, 100,000 projects per year. So it's, a, it's a huge success. Uh, and uh, she has really changed uh, the life uh, of uh, a lot of people of a life uh, of a lot of women because uh, they lend a lot to women, but also uh, of uh, uh, a lot of uh, of men. And this uh, this game changer uh, was uh, created by uh, by a woman, and she has been uh, she she has always been a, a, a source of inspiration for me. Thank you very much. Thank you to the three of you. Thanks so much for having been with us this afternoon. For all of us, all of you who are listening in, please go on, uh, you know, AXA, BNP's website. There's so much uh, to discover there. Please send us your ideas because all of us have to learn. All of us can do more. Thanks for tuning in. And um, hopefully we see you again at the next AXA Live Innovation Talk, which is on May 21st. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you soon. Bye.